Are you thinking about moving out to San Diego? This is gonna be your guide with 10 things you need to know to make your move out to San Diego a success. The first thing right off the bat is the area. Probably the most important thing when you're moving to San Diego, it is a huge county. So if you're saying you're just moving to San Diego, that could be a lot of different places. And so we suggest kind of narrowing that search as much as you can when you start looking, physically looking at homes. And one of the big first items is friends. If you're moving out this way for friends or family, where are they living? Do you wanna be close to them? So like if you're living in Vista or Oceanside or somewhere in North County and you have friends that live in downtown San Diego, you're probably not gonna see them very much. <laughs> uh, that's like a 45 minute drive. It's, a, you know, parking's tough, things like that. So you kind of want to live a little bit closer to them down a little further south or if vice versa, if you have friends that live up in say uh, San Marcos and you want to live in downtown, you're probably not going to see them that often. So seeing if being around friends and family is super important and kind of getting in that 20 to 30 minute range of where they're at and see if that's more important than the actual spot you wanna be. Another thing that's gonna help you choose area is where you're gonna be working. So if you're working in that central area of San Diego, kind of the 56, 52 corridor, somewhere in that zone, there's gonna be a lot of places that are gonna work for you. If you're working up in Carlsbad, there's a big business district up there and you are thinking about living like Chula Vista or Santee or something, that's a trek, that mm -hmm. is a long way. So be sure to take that into account. You can go on the Google Maps and type in, just pick a random location in the city that you are thinking about, and then put your job in there and see, you could do this little timer and see kind of how long the commute is gonna be during different times of the day to give you a better idea. Cause maybe on a Saturday, if you're looking in on Saturday, that's when it's gonna give you the Google map time. But if you wanna change it to like Monday at rush hour to see what it's actually gonna be for your drive home, that's gonna be a better indicator of how far you need, not need to be, but want to be from work. If you've got kiddos and schools are super important, that's obviously one of the things you wanna focus on right off the bat. It's not super straightforward also. So like if you're living in Carlsbad, you might not necessarily be in Carlsbad Unified School District. There's spots that are in Encinitas School District, San Diego School District, San Marcos. So definitely you need to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, La Jolla, for, for instance, is San Diego City School. So just take a look at those things and see what is most important. Also, the ratings of the schools is not the end all be all. Go to the school's websites. There are There's a lot of information about different programs they have. Is the PTO strong? Do they have art? Do they have music? Do they have science? All of those things kind of add to what a school has, not just that rating that is kind of arbitrary, not always the end all be all like I mentioned. And one other thing, especially if you're moving to San Diego uh, and you want to be in an area that's close to the beach, there's no direct like, okay, here's, you know, if you live in San Marcos, you're 20 minutes from the beach. Cause you live in San Marcos, you can live, you know, 18 minutes from the beach, or you can live 30 minutes from the beach. It really depends city to city. A lot of people do move out here for the beaches. It's obviously beautiful, depending on some areas too. Like I like maybe like the 15 corridor. So starting Escondido, Rancho Bernardo, Poway, Scripps Ranch, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty far from the beach. Once you go a little bit west of that, that's when you start getting a little bit close to the beaches. So as you go down to the south, you can shoot down to 52, it'll drop you off in La Jolla. You go to the eight, you get OB, Mission Beach, PB, all that kind of stuff. You got the 78 to the north, that's when you get Oceanside and Carlsbad. So if the beach is super important, then you're kind of want to be probably west of the 15 freeway. Cause like I said, once you get a little bit further out, it's gonna be a bit of a trick. Number two on the list is you have the areas dialed in. Now you're looking at specific neighborhoods. So within each city, obviously with probably where you're living too, you're gonna to have these suburbs, you're gonna have these little neighborhoods, you're gonna have micro neighborhoods within there. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot of different little areas here in San Diego that might work for you. A few ways to go about that. Google Maps is a really good resource where you can hop in there, go to the satellite view, dive into street view, because that's pretty important. And you kind of look around, you could see when the, you see these listing photos, the houses are gonna look gorgeous. They're not showing the neighborhood. They're gonna show you that specific house, all the good features of that, but they're not gonna show you around. So Google Maps, you're gonna see what parks are around. Are the schools like walking distance? Can you go super close to those? What else is around? What freeways are nearby? The pictures look great. Is this right next to a main road or anything like that? So you can really start dialing in these neighborhoods. Also where you are right now, YouTube obviously is a great resource where you have a ton of videos on all kinds of things, all different, you know, we have these talking head style, we got vlog style, we have all kinds of different styles. 
to help you get educated on all these different neighborhoods. And when you're looking at neighborhoods, one of the biggest thing is eliminating neighborhoods from your list. Kind of narrowing that search is the most important part of finding a home. So if you've got a neighborhood that you've already eliminated, take it off the list, start looking and kind of narrowing that search in. And a good way to do this also is our number three, which is plan a visit out this way. Kind of an exploratory visit, not just a vacation. You can obviously have a little bit of fun while you're out here too, but we definitely suggest kind of getting into some of these neighborhoods. We can help you with that too, kind of plan a tour, give you some addresses to check out, but getting into these neighborhoods, walking the streets, seeing where the parks are, kind of get, where am I gonna go to the grocery store? Where am I gonna get my dry cleaning done? Things that you wouldn't really think about on a daily basis, but that are important. So get into these neighborhoods and if there's one on the bubble when you come out here, check it out, see if it's one that you wanna keep on the list or take off the list. And if you are on that exploratory trip out here, like Cassie said, it's hard to set aside a day to just go cruise around neighborhoods when you wanna enjoy vacation, and the beaches and coffee shops and the dinners and all that kind of fun stuff. So I always recommend at least one day, if you got kids, maybe split it into two days cause that's gonna to be tough. But if you're just rolling solo, Maybe one day you get a lot done in one day where you can check a lot of boxes and just see maybe this neighborhood might work. Just even driving through at different times of the day could give you a good idea if that's gonna be the spot for you. And number four is something we could do, help you, is reach out to us. Call, text, email, we got your back. We make a move here to San Diego. But more importantly, help you dial in all these neighborhoods. So we could, like Cassie said, we could put together a search, we could put together a tour and give you little spots of interest. And if you are cruising with the kids, okay, go check out this house. Then you can go to this little park, run off some steam. Then you can go to this little area and really dial it in a little bit further. But the only way to do that is to reach out to us to get that ball rolling. We'll hop on a Zoom call and get that initial conversation started. And part of building that team also is our number five, which is starting to create a budget for moving out this way. And part of that is getting in touch with a lender. We have a great local lender out here that we recommend to folks all the time that can help you kind of just get the ball rolling. It doesn't have to be a pre-approval. It can be just kind of a initial chat about what it's gonna cost you to move out here. Housing wise, if you're thinking about buying right off the bat, they can help you dive into what that cost is gonna be when you're moving out this way. And that's gonna help you dial in those exact amount. So as you're looking on your Zillow searches and whatnot, you are gonna be a little bit more informed. Okay, well, we got approved up to this amount. Well, let's cut off, you know, a little bit further above that, just so you're not just looking at stuff and getting your hopes up and then you come out here like, oh, this isn't what I expected. But also if you got your own lender, you have somebody you trust you're working with, hit them up too, because they're gonna be more than happy to help you out and get the ball rolling. Number six in the guide is planning for unexpected costs. So there's a lot, of, a lot of this stuff is gonna be stuff that you might not think of when you are cruising out here, especially if you're coming from the East Coast or for, far away, moving costs. Like that could be a big expense. We've had a lot of people cruise out here from Virginia's and New York's and stuff like that. And yes, the moving costs can be significant. So one thing to mitigate a lot of that is get rid of a lot of stuff. Maybe budget some stuff uh, when you get out here. So furniture and fixins and all that kind of stuff that, you know, if it's something super important to you, you really love your couch, maybe, maybe bring it. Maybe you really love your bed. You just got a brand new Serta Posturepedic or whatever <laughs> they're called, bring that with you. But Get rid of a lot of stuff because that moving cost can be quite significant. Another one of those moving costs that can be quite a bit is gonna be cars. So shipping a car across the country can get quite expensive. So be sure to run those numbers. You are gonna need a car if you don't have a car coming out here. So take that into account as well because we are a commuter city. We do have public transportation obviously, but I would say most of the time you're gonna be driving somewhere, even if it's just going to the store, going to the dentist's office, bringing the kids to school, a lot of times you're gonna be driving. And one thing also to take a look at is utility costs. Obviously, depending on where you're at, they could be different than they are here in San Diego. But one other thing to think about too is solar has become a big part of most housing here in San Diego but there's different types of solar. So when you're looking at houses, you've got lease solar, you've got own solar. So those are things to look at and just kind of ask the questions too. We, we see all of it, we see all different types. So that's just part of when you're looking at houses, those are different options. And one thing, if they do have the least solar on the house, once again, it's house by house, so don't get caught up on it, but it will you will have to take into account in your monthly payment. So it will go against kind of what you qualify for in your loan as well. Next up on the list is market conditions. What does the market look like here in San Diego and how to kind of plan your move around that? You can never pick the perfect time, but there are some trends that we see 
kind of year to year. Spring is the time when we have the most homes to look at. Going through summer, that's kind of the time where the most inventory is on. And as you hit kind of when school starts and fall is when we see a lot less homes on the market. This is also gonna change year to year also. I mean, it's our normal trends, but it does change. So definitely keep up to date with us on what's going on in the markets. And it's also area specific. So some areas right now even are still getting a ton of multiple offers where some aren't. So really just as you get closer, just kind of dialing in what the market looks like in the areas you're looking at. It's not only area specific, but it's also price specific. So entry level is gonna be different than that move up. It's gonna be different than that luxury. So every little market segment here is gonna be different as well. So just plan accordingly and make sure you are in the know. Number eight in this guide is something that a lot of people do ask when they are trying to plan their move out here, kind of the timeline or how long does it take to actually find a house? Okay, we're moving out, let's say next year in April. How long do we need to plan ahead to actually you know, start looking for a house, find a house, go through ESCO, maybe go through a small rent back with the seller and then get into the house. So it's gonna really vary, but I think a good timeline to that starting point is probably three to four months. So start looking like, obviously you're, you have your searches set up already if you are thinking about moving out here, but really start getting serious at that, probably four months to give yourself enough time to first off, find a house, once again, back to market conditions, depending on how many homes are on the market, what we're seeing out here, how many homes you're actually gonna see. Now, if you can't make it out here, we do a lot of virtual tours, we do a lot, we help a lot of clients who can't actually make it out here due to jobs or whatever until they do purchase a house and move out here. So we have a whole service for that. Hit us up, like I said. But yeah, a good reference for time frame is probably that 90 to 120 days because escrows are typically about 30 days. You're gonna want a few months to, especially right now when we do have a lower inventory market, to find that home. So give yourself enough time. You know, springtime, you're gonna see more houses. Kind of going into fall and winter, you're gonna see less houses come on the market. But that three to four month timeline is a good starting point. Next up on the guide is rentals. So if you aren't planning on buying right when you come out, if you want to explore a little bit more, get a little bit better feel of the neighborhood that's best for you, rentals is an option. To be honest, we haven't found the perfect solution to this, but there are really good options for rentals throughout San Diego County, either short term, which is a little tougher to find, or long term rentals to kind of give yourself some time to find that perfect spot. And really, we suggest finding a rental in kind of, if you have a general idea of where you wanna be, finding a rental there, so you can kind of see what it's like living in those areas. You can also look into break lease. So if you wanna get like a 12 month rental, but you know you wanna find a home in six to nine months, you can kind of take that cost into account when you're budgeting for buying a home out here. And if you are looking that short term route, we have clients who've moved out here, maybe do like an Airbnb, VRBO or something for like a month or two can get a little exhausting, a little more pressure, obviously doing that route. But if you kind of are motivated and you're ready to roll, especially on those websites too, you could do like where you click like, I'll book for a month and you might potentially get a discount or a little bit better rate than a daily rate on, especially Airbnb would get quite extensive. But there's also a lot of apartments if you wanna do short-term rentals, there's a lot of options around where you could get into those. It's not gonna be ideal. You know, you're not gonna have your house, your, where you're gonna live, you're not gonna have your yard, you're gonna be living in an apartment. But that is an option too, you will have a lot more of those than finding like a single family home. But there's there's both ways to do it. And number 10 on the list is getting uh, accustomed to the process out here or the process of buying a home. Could be different where you're coming from. Obviously, we're gonna guide you through that whole process, make sure you know what's going on during the escrow process. You got title, you have insurance, it's kind of a big uh, hot button item here right now. You have wildfire zones and all that kind of stuff. Kind of guide you through all that. Inspections and everything in between. So there's a lot of moving parts, but that's what you got us for. That's what you can lean on us. We're gonna make another video on the entire process. So stay tuned for that. But if you guys wanna know a little bit more about San Diego as a whole, check out that next video popping up, give you a little more information on what to expect when moving to San Diego.